Welcome back everybody to this video series about networking. My name is Bruce Harkvents, a faculty member here at RIT, and I will be your host. To find out more about these videos or about what we're doing here, you can stop by bruceharkvents.com or rit.edu. Thanks for listening. Now this week we are talking about H.323. It corresponds to Chapter 6 in the Packet Guide to Voice over IP. It's a pretty complicated protocol, so we're going to hit the basics. Uh, so without further ado, H.323. Now H.323 is not actually a protocol that you'll see on the network. It's what we call an umbrella protocol, and it is from the International Telecommunications Union telecom sector. So it actually includes a bunch of sub-protocols, and that's actually what we see on the network. Now, H.323 is what we call a signaling protocol. So, anytime you're thinking about signaling protocols, along with H.323, you'll be talking about SIP and Skinny. Those are other major signaling protocols. It predates both of these guys, at least as far as the deployment goes. SIP has been uh, at least an RFC for a while, but the ITU-323 standard was around very early, and comes from a very telecom-ish background, as you might imagine. And it was the de facto standard for video conferencing. Remember, if you think back to the way that things actually got started, long before we had voice over IP, we had stuff like video conferencing. Now, uh, once you drop out of H.323 call control and setup and things like that, you drop into RTP, just like some of the other topologies that we've talked about in these videos and in the chapters. So in that sense, it's exactly like many of the other topologies and operations that we've talked about. But H.323, because it uses these sub-protocols, you'll see transitions from sub-protocol to sub-protocol. And we'll talk more about that here in just a bit. Now before we get uh, too far into H.323, I wanted to remind you guys, especially if you haven't watched the previous videos or read the other chapters, that we're actually talking about a basic voice over IP topology. So that means that we're going to start off just like um, any other topology with DHCP, maybe some TFTP happening, and of course the phones will probably be supported by power over Ethernet. H.323 is a signaling protocol, so that means that we're going to see things like registration, dialing and calling, lookups, that might be 800 numbers or name resolution, things like that. And then just prior to getting into the RTP transport, you have to negotiate the media session info. And then RTP constitutes our transport protocol. RTCP is our quality of service metrics for the transport protocol. And then we'll see H.245 and H.225 uh, drop back into our call after the RTP to terminate the session. And here is a look at our topology. And we see the same components, the DHCP server and the TFTP server to provide for the startup services for the phones. And then, of course, the uh, the chassis itself that, that is actually the call manager. Now, the chapter talks about a couple of different vendors. So we I spent some time there on Avaya and Polycom. Both of them were doing the H.323 suite. Uh, this one happens to be the uh, the Avaya. So let's talk a little bit of terminology here with H.323. Phones or endpoints, those are called terminals in H.323 speak. The gateway is much like you would think of a gateway when you hear that term. Uh, it is really the, the translation point between different kinds of networks or even different kinds of similar networks. The gatekeeper is really there for what we call call control services. So that might be whether or not a terminal is actually allowed on the network, if we're going to keep track of what that terminal is doing. So a gatekeeper is not always part of the topology, but a gateway is, is one of the critical components. And then there's the multipoint controller, and you can see here it's for conferencing and things like that. So these are our main components, but on any topology, you're typically going to see a terminal and a gateway device. All right, so let's talk for a second about some of the other components or objects that we see on every single H.323 topology. And that is our sub-protocols. The one that you're absolutely going to see all the time is H.225. And in a truly standardized, unfooled around with, to quote the commercials, topology, you'll see H.245 as well. There are others, H.235 for security, 
There are other annexes for these protocols. So let's start with 225. 225 is what we might call the, the beginning part of a 323 conversation. It handles all of the things that we normally associate with signaling protocols. I register using H.225. I call other phones with H.225. We'll dial numbers. All these things are 225 specific. So here are some examples of H.225 conversations here. If we take a look at the bottom pane to begin with, we can see DHCP and TFTP. Now these are not all of the messages for those two protocols. I just sort of snipped some. But then we can see right after that we start into 225. And I'm going to point out something here. There are some of these 225 messages immediately following the TFTP that also say RAS, R-A-S, after them under the info. Now that becomes important to us here in a second because that's actually a topology that's implemented the gatekeeper. The 225 down below that is straight up uh, call signaling for 225 without the gatekeeper functions. And up above there we can see an example of an H.225 non-RAS message. And one thing that I like to point out here is that 225 is the bottom. And above that, the actual part that's expanded here is Q.931. Q.931 is actually part of or originates from ISDN call signaling. So H.323 makes use of packetized Q.931 signaling messages within H.225. So this is just a little more formal way of, of saying what I just talked about. So remember that H.225 utilizes the signaling messages so the same functions that are present on an ISDN network are present in packetized form on an H.323 IP based telephony or video call. The RAS portion or registration administration and status is a gatekeeper function it's not always there and that's if you want to implement things like admission control for your network. And then down at the bottom of this I just listed some of the common H.225 messages. Now H.245 and H.225 both have a collection of messages that are defined for them. Some of them are mandatory, some of them are optional, and so you don't always see every message utilized in an H.323 conversation. So let's talk about H.245 for a second. Uh, in, in this image we see a number of the messages involved here. Now remember that H.225 is there to sort of get your phone registered, dial your numbers, provide some mechanism for contacting the other phone, things like that. The uh, point of H.245 is to set up the session for the actual multimedia communication. In other words, you're about to send data between two sides here. How do you want to do it? And so one of the obvious things that we need to do is figure out what codec we're going to use. But this is sort of a negotiation because you might be talking to or sending the transmission between ter two terminals that are exactly the same. Or one terminal might have a significant, significantly larger set of capabilities. And so part of H.245 is to establish what the capabilities of your endpoints are going to be and then what are the parameters for the call itself. And one of those is also hey, what ports do you want to use with RTP? So that's really what we're getting into with 245. So we have this natural progression from H.225 to H.245. All right, I want to say thanks very much for stopping by. Remember that this has been the Packet Guide to Voice over IP Chapter 6, and we've been talking about H.323. And remember that H.323 is the umbrella protocol for the signaling standard or the signaling protocol from the ITUT. We also saw that we have the use of sub-protocols in H.323. A lot more complex than the other two protocols, much harder to read, but uh, there's an awful lot of installed H.323 out there, so in all likelihood, if you're doing voice over IP, you're going to run into 323 out there. Uh, you can cruise around BruceHartPence.com, see what we got going on there. I'm, I try to add things on a fairly regular basis, including uh, videos like this. I think that'll about do it. Thanks very much for listening, thanks for watching, and may your packets always reach their destination.